I mean, I think with enough with with uh, with effort, that's not too crazy. You could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. Um, uh, these are you can basically do it. You can turn someone into a freaking butterfly if you want with the right DNA sequence. Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is solving the money problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, I'm reacting to a few clips of Elon Musk discussing some of the most important topics that I personally can think of. Artificial intelligence, Neuralink, the potential of population collapse, the future of genomics and the ability to potentially reverse aging, and of course, progress towards colonizing Mars. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. That is an obnoxiously good return on your investment. I mean, really, deposit $100 and you'll end up with at minimum $21 worth of stocks, a 21% ROI on your money. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. When do you think realistically human beings will land on Mars for the first time? Um, I, I think it, I feel fairly confident about uh, six years from now. So every the, the Mars uh, Earth Mars synchronization occurs roughly every 26 months. So we had one this year, the summer, and uh, so that means in roughly like about two years there'll be another one, um, and uh, then two years after that. So I think I'd say if you say six years from now, I think highly confident. Uh, if we get lucky, maybe four years, uh, and then we want to try to send a an uh, uncrewed vehicle there in two years. My inner space nerd is absolutely thrilled at the potential of Mars being so close. One of my goals from very early on has been to see Earth from orbit, another to visit the moon, and another to visit Mars. These are goals that I've had for most of my lifetime. I'm 35 years old now. SpaceX didn't exist when I'd been dreaming about these things, and I'm so excited to see how much progress has been made. I really didn't know if it was gonna be a possibility that I'd ever be able to leave this planet in my lifetime. But now I am absolutely certain of it. I'm so stoked about the progress towards Mars. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think it's realistic within two years or so that SpaceX will be able to do their first unmanned mission to Mars and a few years later than that, their first crewed mission? And at some point in the future, would you be interested in visiting Mars? I mean, I'm mostly concerned with developing the technology that can enable uh, a lot of people to go to Mars and make life multiplanetary, have a base on the moon, um, a city on Mars, uh, and I think it's important that we strive to have a self-sustaining city on Mars as uh, soon as possible. Um, I mean, I'm optimistic about the future on Earth, but uh, it's important to have life insurance for life as a whole. I think there's two, two aspects to this. Uh, one is that we want to have a future that is inspiring and exciting. And what are the things that you find inspiring and exciting about the future? And I think one, a future where we are a spacefaring civilization and out there among the stars, I think that's, every kid gets excited about that. You don't even need to teach them. They, they just get, it. it's like instinctive. And so we, we, it's very important for us to have reasons to, like reasons to be excited about life. Like when you wake up in the morning, it can't just be about problems. It's, <laughs> okay, I know everyone in this room deals with a lot of tough problems. But, you know, it's got to be more than that. <laughs> so, you know, I think a future where you can say, hey, even if it's not you, there's, there's going to be people out there that we can have a base on the moon, we're going to have a, you know, a city on Mars, maybe go further, moons of Jupiter and everything. I think that's a very exciting future. And, and then, and I think most people do. Elon, you have so many uh, projects. It's not only Tesla or SpaceX. It's Neuralink. Uh, it's the Boring Company. Uh, uh, so many things. And when we discussed last time, I asked you what is the most important project or the most important topic for you to deal with in the foreseeable future. And you said that is truly the role that AI is going to play in our society. Could you explain yeah. why and why that is a big opportunity, but also seems to worry you. Uh. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, humans have been the smartest creature on Earth for a long time, and that is going to change with uh, what's typically called artificial general intelligence. Uh, so this is, say, an AI that is uh, smarter than a human in every way. Could, could even simulate a human. Uh, so 
you know, th th this is something we should be concerned about. I think there should be uh, government oversight of uh, AI developments, um, especially super advanced AI. It's just this is anything that is a potential uh, danger to the public. We generally agree that this should have uh, government oversight to ensure that the the public safety is taken care of. Because um, you feel that one day uh, the uh, uh, mankind could serve the machines and not the other way around. Honestly, when I see people on their phones, uh, I think we're already serving the machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone's uh, answering the questions. You know, every time you do a search or add information, you're sort of building this the the, the digital group mind. Um, but yeah, uh, it, the advent of artificial general intelligence is called the singularity for a reason because. Just like a black hole, which is a singular singularity, it's difficult to predict what will happen. Um, so it's not as though the advent of AGI is necessarily bad, but it's bad as one of the possible outcomes. And when is singularity in the in the definition of uh, Ray Kurzweil going to happen? Um, well, I think you're saying he, he is predicting 2025. I think that's uh, reasonably accurate. Mm -hmm. And how can it be avoided that is then uh, more a threat for humanity than an opportunity? Is it a question of governance so that there is not too much power yeah. in one or in few hands? Or how would, you, yeah. how would you make sure that it goes into the right direction? I think we should have uh, a, a government oversight just like we do. We have uh, government oversight and regulation of uh, cars and aircraft and uh, food and pharmaceuticals. These are all uh, you know, there's a there are regulators that oversee uh, these developments to ensure public safety, um, and I think uh, yeah, auto, uh, digital superintelligence would also be potentially a public safety risk, and so it should be. It's, I think it's very important to for uh, regulators to keep an eye on that. For those of you who aren't super familiar with the concept of the singularity, I highly recommend the book, The Singularity is Near by Ray Kurzweil. I'll put a link in the description. You can listen to this for free with a new Audible trial. And also, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about some of the potential risks of artificial intelligence, check out the books Super Intelligence and Our Final Invention, also linked below. This is the last major positional change I've had on a topic. I remember many years ago thinking that artificial intelligence, this whole doomsday scenario was complete and utter horseshit, just a fabrication of very creative minds, Hollywood, authors, etc. Oh yeah, the machines are going to take over. Rah, 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 rah. But when I actually started to listen to some of the arguments for and against the development of artificial superintelligence, some of the downsides, etc., I began losing an enormous amount of sleep and completely reversed my position, thinking, oh yeah, it's benign, it's very unlikely there'll be a doomsday scenario to, oh shit this can go wrong in like 1,000 different ways, each of them completely catastrophic, I'm concerned. And I'm a very optimistic person, but I'm also realistic. In my opinion, artificial superintelligence is the biggest potential existential risk to humanity. And I know this sounds alarmist, but I've done the homework and it scares the fucking shit out of me. I do lose sleep about this. I'm not saying that we're automatically going to hell, but boy oh boy, there's so many ways that things can go awry. Once you let this thing out of the bag, that's it. There's no turning back. Who should own the data, data by then? I think everyone should own their own data. Like individuals should own their data. Um, and they certainly shouldn't be tricked by some terms and conditions of a website and suddenly you don't own your data. That's crazy. Uh, who reads those terms and conditions anyway? But I think it's just, you know, like we wouldn't let people develop uh, a nuclear bomb in the backyard just for the hell of it, you know. That, that seems crazy. So. Digital superintelligence, I think, has the potential to be more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. So, yeah, we should uh, just, somebody should be keeping an eye. It's, we can't have the inmates running the asylum here. Which is a global uh, issue, because if we do well, but uh, China has other rules and uh, a different regulatory framework, uh, that is another uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think. Challenge. Yeah, I, I, I generally like that. This is one of the rebuttals I get from those developing AI. And Tesla is also developing a form of AI with self-driving, but it's a very narrow form of AI. It's just mm -hmm. like, um, it, like the car is not going to wake up Sunday one day and take over the world. Um, so, so it's. it's uh, but but the, the rebuttal I get is like, well, you know, China is going to have unfettered uh, AI development, and so. If, we have regulations and it slows us down, then China will have it. And I'm like, look, I, from my conversations with uh, government officials in China, they are 
they, they're, they're quite concerned about AI as well, and they, uh, in fact, they're probably more likely to have a good oversight than I think other countries. What is the biggest uh, challenge uh, ahead of us? I think we need to watch out about uh, population collapse. This is uh, somewhat counterintuitive to most people. Uh, they think that, well, there's so many humans, maybe too many humans. Uh, but that's just because they live in a city. Uh, if you're in an aircraft and you look down, you say, if you dropped a, a cannonball, how often would you hit a person? Basically never. In, in fact, the stuff falling in from space all the time. <laughs> Natural meteorites, old rocket stages, all the time. Um, but nobody worries about it because the, the actual, in fact, it, um, there's a good web, a cool website called Wait But Why and this guy Tim Urban, like he actually just did the math and, and uh, all humans on earth uh, could fit in the city of New York on one floor, don't even need the upper floors. So that's actually, the, the cross section of, of humans as seen from earth is extremely tiny, basically vanishingly small, almost nothing. Um, so we need to watch out about population collapse. Um, Low, low birth rates, I think, is um, a, a big risk. Um, and it's also not exactly top secret. You can go look at the Wikipedia you know, birth rate. The risk of population collapse is both very real and, as Elon Musk said, quite counterintuitive, especially given all the stuff being shoved down our throats. There's not enough food to feed everybody. There's not enough water for everybody, blah, 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 blah. But the truth is, if you look at the data, which kind of matters rather than conjecture and consensus opinion, but the actual data, you will discover there is a direct correlation. The more financial resources, the more education, the more access to information people have, the less children they have and the later they wait to start families. Now, this obviously could become a problem. See, what's happening is everyone in the world is becoming more financially abundant. Of course, there are still people living in poverty, having seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 children, most of which unfortunately don't make it to adulthood. And that's kind of the idea there. It's like, well, shit, you know, I just may as well keep pumping out kids. One of them might do okay and be able to look after me when I can't afford to look after myself in my old age, blah, blah, blah. There's also people trying to have lots of children for religious reasons, etc. But over time, the correlation is quite clear. We are headed towards imminent population collapse. Again, as Elon said, just look at the Wikipedia information. You'll see the birth rate in developed nations declining well below replacement rate in many places now. Obviously, this isn't universal, but the trend is there. The correlation is there. As people are lifted out of poverty, they're less likely to have even two children at a replacement rate. Run the numbers. Doesn't look great. So, and, and, and this, this is actually, this, this, is, this is definitely the civilization ends with a with a whimper, not a bang, uh, because it would, it would be a sad ending um, where the, the average age becomes very high and really the youth are effectively uh, de facto enslaved to take care of the old people. This is not a good way to go end. Do you have any um, new projects dealing with these topics that you've just addressed? Um, well, I'm trying to set a good example on the kid front. <laughs> Six kids. Yes. Um, <laughs> for now. <laughs> um, How much time do you spend with them? Uh, I, I spend about as much time as they want to spend with me. So, but they, yeah. I, I mean, they're not, uh, well, one's just a baby and the others are 14 and 16 and uh, teenagers um, don't usually want to hang out with their parents that much, you know. You know, we just had Thanksgiving weekend, so all, all the kids were over. Um, so, you know, they, 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 spent, if they want to spend more time with me, I say, like, oh, you should, I actually asked them, are you sure you don't want to hang out more? And like, no. So uh, I think it's probably the right amount then, since they, that's my, the, they don't want to hang out more. Um, so I think we really should take this seriously, the population collapse, artificial intelligence, obviously sustainable energy is important. Uh, the faster we transition to sustainable energy, the less uh, of a gamble we're taking with climate. And um, I, th I think there's gonna be a lot of breakthroughs on the medical front, uh, particularly around synthetic uh, mRNA. Uh, you can basically do anything with uh, synthetic uh, RNA, DNA. Um, it's it's like a computer program. So, I mean, I think with enough with with uh, with effort, that's not too crazy. You could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. Um, 
Uh, these are, you can basically do it. You can turn someone into a freaking butterfly if you want with the right DNA sequence. So, I mean, caterpillars do it. So. Now, I suspect a few of you are sitting back right now going, wait, how high is Elon Musk during this interview? What is he talking about? Reverse aging? Turn a person into a butterfly? Like, dude, give me whatever you're smoking. That sounds fun. But the truth is, anyone with a basic understanding of genomics will understand this to be true. Our DNA is software. It is a programming language. Our bodies are a biological computer running that operating system and that software, that code. Yes, this is actually a fact. Craig Venter many years ago literally coded an artificial life form, wrote a new species, a new life form with code. What code was that? A genome, custom built genome to make a custom built form of life. This has already happened years ago. I'm somebody who had my DNA genotyped well over half a decade ago, was very interested in the health markers and all kinds of other information that I could discover. We are just getting started. This is why I think that genomics, the entire sector of genomics, is likely to be the next multi-trillion dollar bonanza. Over the next 10 to 20 years, we're going to see so much progress towards curing aging, diseases, all sorts of other things. I can't wait. And as per my mantra, my goal is to live long enough to live forever. And a huge part of that relates to progress in medicine, technology, and particular in genomics. Lelon's right. We literally, at some point in the future, will be able to reverse aging. This matters. Yeah. Your project Neuralink is in a way empowering human intelligence versus artificial <laughs> intelligence. That's the purpose yeah. of it. Is that correct? Yeah. So Neuralink, the, 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 uh, in, the, in the short to medium term, Neuralink is really just going to um, help cure uh, brain injuries, mm. and brain and spine injuries. So it's like if, if somebody is a, in fact, our, our first uh, implanted devices in humans will be for uh, quadriplegics, tetraplegics, allowing them to control a computer or a phone just using their mind. Um, so, like you can imagine, like if Stephen Hawking could just mm -hmm. talk uh, and yeah. at, at normal speed or even faster than normal speed. I've said it before, and I will say it again. Neuralink is by far Elon Musk's most important company. No contest, not even close. Do you agree? I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and hearing Elon nerd out about a few other things that aren't discussed as often. These are actually fantastic questions from Axel Springer and don't forget there's a link in the description to the full interview. It's really nice to hear new and fresh topics rather than the same old BS. I'm sure you've all heard Elon's canned responses to 400 of the same questions so this is really cool to hear him talking about things like population collapse, genomics, the future of artificial intelligence and plenty more. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again